You do not want to come out here, buddy. <laughs> I can assure you that. This Joker thinks he actually wants to come out here. I guarantee I'm going to open the door. I'm going to offer it to him, and he's not even going to set a paw out. Watch this. You want to come out? You want to come out? All right, here you go. Come on, buddy. <laughs> he's appalled. <laughs> yeah, it's cold, isn't it? What's going on, everybody? As you can see, it's really, really cold outside. Uh, you can stand out there for a little bit and maybe, you know, <sighs> yeah, no, there's nothing you can do right now. <laughs> Today is one of those days that you're just going to be stuck inside and not really able to do anything. So what I thought I'd do is I'd kind of explore finding, in terms of photography, and finding angles and compositions within wherever you live, whether it's apartment, home, um, really whatever, because obviously, outdoors now you can you can go out and you can by all means get some shots in weather like this in fact it's a lot of fun but it requires a specific gear and that kind of gear i really don't have i mentioned in uh, my one frame series that i don't really have gloves or i don't use gloves when i go shoot photography in snowy conditions like this uh, because they're kind of a hassle to work with or operate cameras with so until i find something to supplement that i'm not even going to touch temperatures that are like 10 degrees, single digits, whatever. So I'm stuck inside today and I'm gonna see what I can do with that, if anything. There's a few ideas that I have in my head um, and I'm gonna try to maybe help guide you guys along on what you look for and um, tips and tricks if you're kind of in the same boat or you just wanna know some helpful helpful tips on you know finding compositions in small places like this. So um, yeah, let's get to it. Also, I switched to a wider angle lens, if you can't already tell, but if you haven't watched the first episode of my one frame series, you should do that. Um, I got my, I got the physical photo print delivered and I'm holding it right here. Here it is. I thought I was going to wait until the actual like series to showcase it, um, but I thought I'd show you now. What I'm going to do with this will be continued in the one frame series, but yeah, here it is. It's, it actually turned out really cool and I love the size of it. So. Um, if you want more details on that, go watch the series. Okay, I still need to switch lenses on this bad boy right here. So we're gonna use the 2470 G Master, uh, the old one, I don't have the new one, because I'm broke. Little tip, if you have a mirrorless camera um, and the shutter doesn't come down when you open the lenses, when you open the lenses and when you're changing lenses, point your camera down. Um, that will help sensor dust from falling onto the sensor. So if you're replacing this lens, just do it always pointing the camera down. And uh, that should help, it should help limit the sensor dust. I'm not saying it's gonna guarantee you not getting sensor dust at all, but it definitely does help. And just like that. Okay, so let's jump into kind of the plan. What do you do first? Or like, what are you trying to look for first when you're in such a small confined area? Um, and honestly, if it's your own living space, it, you can get kind of uninspired in that because you're in it so much. You know, you kind of grow used to the things around you. You're kind of like bypass certain aesthetics that might be cool, I don't know. So I understand it could be hard in that sense. This is why this is a good exercise because it makes you kind of open your eyes a little bit and look at things that you might overlook in your normal living space, but that'll make you a little bit more sensitive to finding those really cool compositions out and about in areas that you're not used to. I'm gonna dial the exposure back just a little bit. Yeah, there we go. But first, let's narrow down the kind of feel that you're going for in the photos. Um, with this being my own living space, with it being kind of cloudy and, and dreary outside, I think we're gonna go for a more warm, cozy feel on the inside. So. Um, you can, and that's what I mean, you kind of have to work with your environment, you kind of have to base the feel that you're going for off of what's currently around you. So how am I going to do that? The compositions that we're looking for to do that are going to be related to that warm and cozy vibe. So, for example, like doing something with the espresso machine and coffee, maybe I make like a coffee and you know get a shot of the steam or, or something. Um, I also like this composition right here, uh, maybe getting a picture of the, this side table 
with the window and getting the uh, the snow outside. I'll probably move the Lego polar bears, but you get the idea. Maybe doing something with like a blanket uh, draped over a couch or something showcasing um, the weather outside. So things like that that are directly tied to the feel that you're going for. So if you nail down the feel that you want in your head, that's when you can start kind of building, okay, what goes along, what kind of compositions would go along with that feel. Okay, so we're gonna start with moving the couch and getting a spot for my camera and then kind of playing around with the compositions there. Um, actually, wrong. We're gonna start by moving the, uh, the Lego polar bears here. Okay, I don't want to move it like all the way out because it's just a pain, but uh, see how many crumbs are underneath this thing, geez. Okay, that should do, that should be plenty for me to get at least my tripod here. I think I definitely want to like put a book there or something or have something on the, uh, the table. I think I might, we'll see what it looks like with the plant. I might t take the plant off and like put a book there with the lamp, but I'm definitely gonna have the lamp on to get that warm, uh, that warm glow, but uh, we'll see. We'll see what this looks like here. By the time, I think I want it to be more of a 50. And yeah, see, by the time I'm at 50, I need to lower the legs quite a bit. So we're gonna lower one more. There we go, okay. And then if we dial it to 50, that should be perfect. Awesome, okay. So, let me grab the camera real quick. So this is what we're working with um, if it focuses. There we go, you can kind of see. You can kind of see the composition there. Let's see what kind of books my wife has over here. I think she has, yeah. So here is a Christmas Carol. I thought maybe that would be fun to put there. Um, it would fit the vibe. I don't know. I also kind of wanted a bigger book than this because this is just a sliver. I really like the look of this one. Um, I really don't know what this book is. My wife knows what this is. I do not, but it looks cool, so we're gonna go with it. So now it's about framing up the, oh, and that actually looks really cool. One thing I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to simulate a fire, or at least like a fire light. So I'm gonna grab my little LED um, light strip here. This, by the way, these are really cool and very useful. Uh, let's see, the brand is whatever that is, am, am, Ambitful, it, yeah. But this is only 50 bucks off of Amazon, um, or was it 34? One of the two, but either way, it's really, really reasonable, and uh, it, it's full RGB, has a few other modes too, so it's really cool. So this should be perfect um, for what I need it to do. Um, need to really try not to like hold it down here and hold it up here. I don't have another tripod, but I do have this coffee table. So we will just pull it on over here. So now we got a nice little orange light reflecting there. Hopefully, that's a little intense, but uh, we're gonna play around with the settings here and hopefully we can simulate what looks like a fire going. So this is what we're working with. We've got ISO 250, F11, cause I really want to try to get the outside um, and showcase, you know, that it's, that it's snowy. Um, shutter speed at 1 40th of a second. Um, I'm not trying to get like snow flakes or uh, by any, any means, but I want you at least to be able to see the snow on the, the trees out there. Um, yeah, and so we've got the, let me mess around with the white balance just a little bit. Uh, maybe make it a little warmer. Or actually, you know, bring it down. Yeah, we we'll bring it down a little bit. Maybe, around there, because I want to showcase, I want to showcase that it's still really cool. Now it's, you know, the winter, it's winter outside, but I also don't want to overpower the uh, the orange light and, and, you know, the warmth from inside. Uh, I'm gonna straighten the the uh, lamp cover real quick, and then uh, the lampshade, and then I'm gonna take this photo. I think, I think I might actually try to move the light just a little bit closer, so I'm gonna try that again. Just to get a little bit more of the orange glow, um, to simulate that fire. So here, we'll take a second shot here. There's our second, there's our first. So I mean, it's really minuscule, but you can see how the orange and the warmth increased in that second shot. It just kind of filled out the dead space to the left there. It was a little dark. This is a little bit warmer. And I think I like that, so call this good.
things are back to normal. We've got the table back and the couch back and all that. Second composition that I'm gonna do here is kind of touched on it earlier. I'm going to use the espresso machine. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get a shot of a shot being pulled into one of these little cups. So again, somehow you don't really need, so the, to showcase warmth um, with this, you really only need it to be dark and you need there to be a hot drink and that's already gonna be happening with the shot being pulled. So um, I don't need to showcase like a fire or something or like I did back there. Uh, this one is pretty self-explanatory and if I can frame it up to where you've got the coolness of the window com coming in, um, you can showcase a wintry scene and you know being warm inside pretty easily. So for now, we're gonna mess around. I think the angle I wanna come at is kind of where I'm standing, kind of like this, slightly off center. Um, and have it kind of zoomed in right about here going this way. So uh, I'm gonna frame that up real quick and see how that looks. All right, so here is our composition. As you can see, slightly off center, kind of like I talked about. I've got manual focus set so it doesn't, uh, so I don't miss the, uh, the actual pull. Um, settings wise, a lot different than the last one. So we're rocking one 640th of a second because I do want to somewhat freeze the stream of coffee when it's getting pulled. Um, rocking 2.8 to help supplement how dark it is because of the shutter speed, but also because I really wanted the background to be blurred on this one. Um, and then we're rocking um, 500 ISO, so not too bad. Up to the, uh, the white balance a little bit, as you can see up to 5400, I wanted to pull a little bit more warmth. It's a little bit too cool for my liking, but yeah, hopefully we get some steam. Hopefully we get um, some really nice um, streams on both sides. Uh, of this pull and uh, hopefully it's a good pull so I can enjoy it afterwards. <laughs> I've also got it set to a high drive mode because one photo is not going to cut it here. <laughs> I'm just going to try to get as many as I can uh, while it pulls and then see if I at least get a single frame out of it um, that works. So we'll go ahead and start the espresso and uh, we'll see what we can do. All right, there we are. We've got our shot pulled, so I'm gonna make a drink out of that later. Uh, and then most importantly, I think we've got plenty of shots. It's, as you can see, it's still writing to the card. Um, I took probably 40 or so shots, um, so there'll, there'll be one in there. I wanted to make sure I got some of the beginning pull, kind of the mid pull, and then the end where you can kind of start seeing some of the, uh, the top layer of the espresso shot get pulled there. But um, yeah, I saw some steam, so hopefully, hopefully it turned out good. There you go, I don't know how well you can see it, but this shot turned out really cool. Um, there's a really defined like droplet of coffee and uh, I think I probably might have been able to go a little bit faster with the shutter speed but I think this is fast enough I was able to freeze that uh, that pour fairly fairly well so not as much steam as I would have liked um, I will have to see once I actually get it into the editing program but um, yeah not not bad at all Final composition is going to be utilizing the coffee I just made um, in a mug, trying to get the steam with the general aesthetic of a winter scene in the background. So what that looks like is I'm gonna have the coffee on the counter, um, camera's gonna be back here, coffee on the counter, and then the, the background is going to be the, uh, the windows with the snow outside, the, uh, the lamp on, and then I've got, if it focuses, got the blanket on the, uh, the, the couch there, and then everything else is just kind of clean and uniform. I think I'm gonna turn that light on just to have a little bit more warmth. Yeah, that's good. I don't, I'm not gonna get that in my frame because I'm gonna have it cropped in on the, uh, the coffee. About right here, probably around this height. So I'm really probably only gonna get at like 70 or 50 mil. I'm probably only gonna get the, like the one window or maybe the two, um, excuse me in the actual frame, but uh, for now, I'm gonna make sure I get the coffee in the microwave scalding hot so I can get some steam off uh, coming off the mug, and then I'm gonna set up my, uh, my camera as well, and uh, we'll be back. Okay, so I've got it framed up. Um, I really like it so far, but there's still too much dead space, like right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a notebook and a pen and put it there. Uh, and I think that's gonna help fill that space in quite nicely. I love the fact that we're getting some really cool reflections on the counter right now, um, but I love how um, warm that lamp is in the background. You can tell it's cold outside. 
Um, yeah, so I'm gonna grab those two things, put them there, and then see how that looks. Notebook and pen turned out great. I've got the coffee in the microwave again just to get that steam, and then as soon as I get it out, um, and as soon as it's got some steam coming off of it, uh, we're gonna take shots, and then that's it. Uh, really actually liking how this specific composition is turning out a lot. So this might be one of my favorite ones of the, uh, the little video here, but uh, we'll see. We'll see how it turns out. I think you can see the steam a little bit. I'm not sure, it's definitely there. I don't know how well it's showing up on camera though. At this rate, I probably could have just boiled water and, uh, <laughs> and put it in the cup because the, the frame itself, you don't actually see inside the cup. So, um, but we're getting, we're trying to get some more steam because you, it was there in those frames that I took, but it wasn't there a lot. So um, we're gonna try to heat it up even more and see where this goes. This might be undrinkable at this point. Okay, I got a few more. Um, there was a couple that had the steam in there just a little bit more than the first one, so I I'm gonna call it good. I think that's, I think that'll do it. I'm also not opposed to adding in stuff after the fact, um, because you can very easily add some steam in like Photoshop um, or just any photo editor really. Uh, but for these specific photos, don't really feel like doing that, so I was trying to get it as um, accurate as I could in real life, but um, I don't think it turned out too bad. So um, hopefully by the time, I'm already displaying these photos, but by the time I edit it and throw it on screen, hopefully it looks good. Well, this is so hot and it's just like ruined at this point, so. Um, Probably not gonna drink that, but that is it for this video. Uh, hopefully this video not only gave you some entertainment, but also kind of helped you if you're in the same situation where uh, maybe outside's not the most ideal or just whatever location you're in, um, you're kind of stuck to doing it in your, in your home or wherever you are. Um, like I said, it can be uninspiring, but hopefully I gave a, you a few tips to kind of help break past that, um, that barrier and kind of uh, look around and find out the uh, that there's actually some pretty fun compositions that you can do even within your own space. With photography, obviously like anything, the more you do it, the more you practice it, the better you're gonna get and that can even include doing it in your own space like this. Next week's video is going to be one frame episode two, um, regardless of if it's 10 degrees out or not. We're supposed to get like zero degrees here this weekend, uh, but then it's supposed to go back up to around 30, 34. That kind of temperature I can handle. But until then guys, go out and create something yourself, find those compositions, I'll see you all in the next one.